Now I'm gonna suggest maybe taking a shorter stance. This is something I, I see all the time. What I see a lot more too is a very laterally tilted pelvis, something like this, where the front pelvis is dropped down significantly like this. So what I'd like you to do is explore that. Deliberately draw your right pelvis down and what you're gonna feel is a little different sensation in the right hip joint. And then look at my spine. You can see how my spine is completely uh, laterally flexed, right? Do the opposite, try to laterally tilt. You might need a shorter stance. By the way, do move your pelvis back, otherwise you won't have any available movement. Move your groins back and then laterally tilt so that your left pelvis is lower than your right. So lift your right pelvis up. I rarely would see this except for when people do reverse warrior, they do something like this where they laterally tilt the pelvis the opposite way and then don't actually move their spine. So in reverse warrior, it might be more beneficial to do what most people are doing in warrior two, to drop the right pelvis down so you actually get that nice deliberate stretch across the right waistline and you get the deliberate lateral flexion. Rather than doing warrior two like this, do reverse warrior like this. So it's kind of the opposite of what most people are doing. Move the pelvis back, level the pelvis, So can you go a little, go slowly. Okay, I'm going a little fast because I feel confident in knowing where my end range is, but go a little bit slowly and feel, can you laterally tilt the pelvis and notice what happens to your spine and then see if it's possible, is it possible to level your pelvis so you don't have any lateral tilt at all in your warrior two position so that it's really a hip joint posture. And then when you go to reverse warrior, feel free, you could either keep the pelvis level or feel free to exaggerate the flexion by lowering the right pelvis down. So let's go, here's level, reverse warrior. Here's lowering the right pelvis down. You see how my right abdomen stretches more there. My right psoas is also gonna stretch a little bit more. So right ankle over left knee, bend the left knee like you're coming to a chair pose, wag the tail to the right, that's a medial rotation, and then hike the right pelvis up and take the hands down to the left side. Now, take your left hand to your heel and press it across. This is gonna be lateral flexion. I'm kind of lifting and lengthening my right sit bone up and out to the right, but I'm side bending to the left, so I'm actually deliberately creating a side stretch in my right waistline. All right, come on up. We're gonna come down into Janu Shirshasana. First, a lateral flexed position. So left heel to the inner right groin. You can start, if you just bow forward, your pelvis should be more or less bowing like so, right? But we create this lateral flexion of the spine, and it's gonna give a bit of deep stretch for the left QL. For some of you, that's gonna be really relieving, and others of you, that's gonna feel like you don't want that, and instead, you should create more of an upright engagement and you can do a twist like this where you're actually using your back muscles to stay upright as you twist. Um, so let's do frog pose. Pelvis, groins go back, elbows come down. And now what I'm gonna explore is a little bit of recognizing the right versus the left groin. I can feel a very little stretch in my left groin. To me, I, I understand my body well enough to know that my left groin muscles, adductor muscles, tend to be very flexible. My right tends to be tight. So I'm actually not gonna avoid the, the, the stretch on the right side. I'm actually going to embrace the stretch on the right side and avoid the stretch on the left side. Even though I don't feel a stretch on the left side, what I'm gonna do is press my left knee down, stabilize the left inner thigh a little bit, and allow the right to stretch more, I mean, or, or experience the stretch sensation more. It's probably not stretched out as much, but it just feels more, just knowing my own body. You might be the opposite. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, and you feel like you're, the stretch is even, then what you can do is press both knees down and drag them toward each other a little bit, so you have a gentle engagement of these inner thigh muscles while they are stretching. That's always the safe bet, is just do the same thing on both sides. Here's an opportunity, if you like, I mean, really go slow with this, and minimal movement. You can hike your right hip up a little bit, and then, or hike your left hip up a little bit, and you can anterior and posterior tilt the pelvis. So you can do lateral tilt and anterior posterior tilt. I feel the biggest shift when I do posterior tilt versus anterior tilt in this changes where the uh, stretches in the adductors. And when I posterior tilt, I squeeze in Otherwise, it could be too compressive on my hip joints. So I squeeze in and I lift the hips up a little bit when I posterior tilt. And when I anterior tilt, I can allow a little bit more of a sinking down. Coming on out by usually I lean forward. Uh, we're gonna deliberately flex, laterally flex the spine and 
we're going to deliberately laterally tilt the pelvis for this pose called hurler stretch. So the right leg goes out to the side and the left leg goes back. And you try to take as wide of a stance as possible. So what we're gonna do is actually lift our hips up and slide the right hand underneath to grab the left ankle. So I lean forward like this, slide my right hand underneath, try to grab my left ankle. If this isn't working out, what you do is just, you take this standard Janu Shirshasana open variation and grab your right knee, and that tends to be an easier, uh, I don't wanna say easier, it's still a deep stretch, but more accessible than perhaps this. Okay, so here, you see how my pelvis is now actually laterally tilting towards the right leg. I'm not collapsing into the right leg, but what I wanna do is press my left ribs up to the sky to laterally flex. Okay, so I have my hand underneath grabbing my ankle, now I don't just kind of side bend, or I don't just kind of let the pelvis do all the movement. I press the left ribs up and create a lateral flexion of the spine in this position. So I'm almost tucking my right buttocks towards my right heel as if I'm trying to untilt the pelvis, though my pelvis is very tilted because of this back leg. The way it's, it's uh, the, you know, my arm being underneath my thigh here lifts the left pelvis up already. I'm already laterally flexing the pelvis. At this point, it might feel good to stretch the arm over. Maybe not, of course, you know. Uh, you could always take your hand behind your head too is another option.